Hello, we're ready to go. It's Thursday. It's three o'clock in London. It's 10 a.m. Eastern and we're live here in the Digital DJ Tips HQ with me, Phil Morse, as ever on a Thursday. No agenda. We're just live on our YouTube channel. We're live on our Facebook page and in our Facebook Global DJ Network group. And we're also live on Twitch with the studio and me and an hour to kill. So this is all about you. It's about your questions. It's about anything you need help with in your DJing. If you don't know who we are, we are the leading online DJ school. We've taught nearly 35,000 students DJing from beginners all the way up to pro level and production and all the stuff that comes with being a great DJ today. In fact, we've got 26 courses, but we do like to do these live shows every week for free to anyone who wants to tune in because we like giving something back and it's good fun. I often go home, this is the end of my day, I often go home feeling like I've gone down the pub with a load of like-minded DJs and chatted DJing for an hour or so. And let's face it, that sounds like good fun, doesn't it? And it is. So what have we got to talk about this week? Well, there's a few things going on. There's always things going on. There is the Rain's new piece of equipment, which now is pretty, we're pretty sure what we're looking at here now. We've just written it up on the website. It's a high-end Serato controller, but without the motorized jog wheels that Rain has been famous for until this point. They are definitely, from what we can see, kind of standard, they'll be very nice, standard jog wheels. Uh, and because of that, because this is doesn't look like it's a, an out and out scratch controller, and because all the buttons look like they're pretty well integrated into the, all the software features of Serato, so we've got We've, we've dissected this a lot already, but look, you've got separate a cappella buttons and instrumental buttons, as well as the pads have all got these lovely displays on them, which clearly are designed to help you make the most of using the pads with the stems functions and all the other functions as well. So you've got these OLED displays there, which are gonna really make it easier when you are dialing in Serato's performance functions. We think what we're looking at here is basically the best performance controller ever made for Serato, which we weren't expecting from Rain. This is surprising us a bit. Could be the Rain 2, could be the Rain stems or something like that, I don't know. But anyway, it looks like more of a performance than a scratch controller with fixed platters. That's our current guess. And we think at this point that we're pretty close to what that's gonna be. Again, nothing official. We've just been doing what you've probably been doing if you've been bored this week and looking at the Instagram pics that Rain's been posting. And uh, anyway, that's our view. So what do you think? Would you go for that? Would you go for, oh, and it might be four channel. And the reason we think that is that the pads are underneath the jog wheel. And that means that the mixer section is probably gonna be a more standard kind of mixer section. And it would make sense if you're doing a, a Serato controller with all the bells and whistles of Serato on it to go for the four channel. That's our guess. Again, we don't have any information on that. We're just guessing. So yeah, could be a really interesting device. Of course, at some point we will hear officially and at some point we'll get one here so we can stick it on this very desk here and tell you all about it. But until then, we're still speculating. But like I say, what do you think? Would you go for something like that? Let us know. So yeah, that's been going on. What else has been going on in DJing this week that we might want to talk about? Um, we heard that BPM, the, uh, the download pool, has, uh, has relaunched and it's given, its, uh, given itself a, a lick of paint. And now the Latino side of it is folded into the main side so you can get them both in one app and they've done lots of changes to the way you can search for music in there it's actually the most popular streaming service sorry that's a that's that's a, a mistake I, I said there and i'll tell you why i made that mistake in a second it's the most popular download pool among digital dj tips community um, bpm supreme seems to be hugely popular um, but they did announce that they were going to be adding a streaming service to what they do. In fact, Pioneer DJ announced it. They said, we will be plugging in BPM Supreme Streaming soon, which obviously got everyone excited because the only streaming service for DJs at the moment is Beatport and BeatSource. So another one, competition is always a good thing. Uh, but then it got postponed and we didn't hear anything more about it. I asked BPM Supreme about it. They said, we can't tell you anything more about that at the moment. And they didn't mention anything about that today either. So I think we'll probably be waiting a while longer um, for 
if and when that appears. But anyway, something else new going on. I think that's probably it. It's some um, reasonably quiet times. I'm going to ADE in Amsterdam next week, which is the Amsterdam dance uh, event. Uh, and it's uh, always a good place to get gossip and take photos and meet people and sit on panels and help and do meetups. I'll be seeing Layback Luke and I've, I'm booked to sit on a couple of panels and stuff as well. So I'm looking forward to that. So might see you there if you're in Europe or if you're in Amsterdam. Uh, and I'll have more to tell you, I guess, um, because I've been, I'll have been hanging out with the industry for a week and that, you always hear stuff then. So next week, might actually do one live from Amsterdam. We'll see how we go on next week, uh, but certainly uh, in the next few weeks, we might have more news and stuff for you. But anyway, I'm just trying to give you ideas of stuff to talk about today, but really it's all about you. So um, what we do now is we go to, to let you behind the curtain, really. Uh, I, I see all your comments, no matter what platform you're on, I see all your comments coming through here onto my computer. So you can see we've got Facebook and YouTube. We even get the odd Twitch one. We, we don't do enough on Twitch, I have to be honest. Uh, but anyway, all your comments come through here. So do ask away. We are live uh, and that means I can answer you directly. And uh, if you ask on Facebook, if you ask a question on Facebook, it will stay there afterwards. And that means that we can answer you even if you're watching the recording or we don't get around to you live. So the rules are keep calm. I don't want you uh, getting all het up. We're talking about DJ, not world politics here. And please ask only once because if you ask over and over again, you're taking up a slot that someone else's question could appear in. Uh, and I will not answer questions I see more than once. I try my hardest to get to them all. Right, let's do it. Hello to DJ Ginormous. Hello to Charlie and Juan and Mark. And you don't like my music there in Toronto. Hello to Cameron, who says, oh no, I'm gonna have to watch the replay. My power's going out now. The perks of being a South African. Hey, never mind that. They're talking about brownouts uh, across uh, the United Kingdom this, uh, this winter. Hello to Kesia in Chicago, which is where my wife was this weekend, just gone, uh, running the marathon. Well done to Faye, who did a personal best time in the Chicago marathon. Good girl. Uh, hello to, uh, to uh, Maria Lee on Twitch. We do have people on Twitch here today, which is awesome. Um, right, questions. This is all about questions. So the first question is from Alan. Uh, and Alan says, hi, Phil, do you know of any, or could you point me in the right direction of, a DJ download pool that specializes in old school house, garage, or drum and bass, like 90s vibe? I've searched and searched, but to no avail. And the answer to that question, Alan, unfortunately is no, but for everyone else who wonders why DJ download pools, we've already talked about one today, BPM Supreme, but the other ones are DJ City, Zip DJ, Promo Only, DMS, and all the others, why they don't have old music. If you've ever wondered that, I will explain it to you now. Back in the day, record labels used to give a very small number of their new releases as literally white labels or as pre-release press, pressings on vinyl to promotion companies who would then send them to DJs who were working. And those DJs would have to send back, or as we, I used to do this with a fax machine, a piece of paper called a reaction sheet where you wrote down how the track that they'd sent you was going down in your clubs, on your dance floors, so that they could gauge whether they had a hit on their hands and how many to press and release and how much promotion money to put behind those songs. And that was they were called promo pools, DJ promo pools. Now, when digital DJing came on, it all went online and it became a lot easier to run these things and they expanded it to a lot more DJs because, hey, if you're gonna send a track to 500 DJs, why not, why not send it to 1,500 or 5,000 as long as they're working DJs and they're gonna be playing these tracks. And the whole thing became a little bit more easy for DJs to get involved with. But one of the things that has stuck on these pools and which nowadays, by the way, you pay a monthly fee and you get to download as much new music as you want that has been given to the pools by the record labels. Uh, the way it works nowadays is um, that just like in the old days, you, you're not going to find old music on these pools because they're not made for that purpose. They're not made for you to be able to just pay a subscription and download all the music you want. They're made for you as a working DJ to play those tunes on your dance floors. Now you don't have to send reactions back anymore with most of these pools. And frankly, the definition of working DJ is a bit bloody loose to be honest, but you won't find old music on them. Music will go on there, it will be remixed by their in-house teams to give you easier versions to DJ with and clean mixes and short mixes and intro mixes and acapella intros and all that stuff, but they won't stay there forever because 
that's not the purpose of these. So there's no way you're going to find a download pool that specializes in old school house, garage, or drum and bass. The best way to get that stuff is to search for unmixed CDs on eBay because, or anywhere else that sells secondhand stuff. And you could even go digging around if you're lucky enough to live in a city that's still got record shops or decent thrift shops, shops with record uh, and CD sections, go and dig around there and find the unmixed compilation CDs. Um, because they are very, very easy and cheap and cost-effective cost effective is cheap uh, way of grabbing that music. You rip it into your computer. The, the way the tech works nowadays is that your computer will be able to look online and identify all those tracks and you'll have pristine, hopefully, clean rips of all the old music you, that, that was stuck onto those compilations back in the day for very little money, um, all metadata up and good quality as well. So my advice would be get buying on eBay it is probably the best place. And of course, at 79 cents a single, you could have a hit list of, you know, 100 must have old school tunes in your case. What is it? House, garage and drum and bass. List your favorite 100. It's going to cost you $79. Go and buy them on iTunes if you can still find them or whatever. Uh, but you won't find them in DJ download pools. OK, people. We're live. It's Digital DJ Tips. It's me, Phil, in the studio, answering your questions as we do every Thursday at this time. Um, but there is a secret weapon that we have if you need help with your DJing and let me show it to you now. And it's the digitaldjtips.com website, the biggest resource for DJs in the world. Let's say that you need help with getting involved in, I don't know, lighting. You want some DJ lights. You want to get some lights uh, to make your DJing in your home or in your, you know, mobile gigs or in your bars that you're playing uh, look better. You hit that search bar I just hit and you just type what you want in the top of our website and then you click search and you will find our 5,000 articles searched and presented for you and here's all the stuff we've got to help you with on lighting and it goes back and back and back. So this is a secret weapon that you need to know about if you want to learn quickly about any aspect of DJing because really this index is never ending. All I would say is leave a bit of time because you might end up uh, hanging around here for a long time and missing anything else you're meant to be doing. Uh, so do use that, please, because we spent literally over the last 12 years, we have spent countless hours building this resource. So it's free. It's there. Uh, let's get your next live question then. So thank you very much for that question from Alan. Uh, and uh, lots and lots of you here as ever. So thank you, everyone. Um, and the, uh, the next thing that looks like a question to me, let me see. You see, I always search for question marks, but a lot of you don't bother putting question marks on the end of your questions. So um, I'm, that's not going to help me today. And we also say hashtag ask. But you know what I mean. I don't hold you to that either. Um, you don't like my music, says motorized platters always seemed a bit superfluous, superfluous to me, but I don't scratch. It's an interesting one, really, because you don't need, like on today's DJ gear, you don't need these to go around when you hit play. Right? You don't need that to be going around. I mean, this has even got a graphic that goes around for you. So you can see the thing going around uh, when the play button has been hit. You don't need that at all. There's nothing that a motorized platter brings to this or to any digital DJ controller that is essential. It's simply about the feel of it. Because if you put the same motor that you get in a Technics turntable and you put a real piece of vinyl on top and then when you hit the play button, it pulls away from your hand like a Technics turntable will, well then it's gonna feel like you're DJing on a Technics turntable or techniques for you Americans turntable and that is a very good thing as you say quite rightfully there you don't like my music it's a good thing for scratch DJs who were brought up on vinyl but other than that totally agree with you not necessary CDJs killed the spinning platter when they appeared god knows how long ago when was that 20 years um, longer uh, because CDJs didn't have a spinning platter and they suddenly put the turntable at the back of the DJ booth where people used it as a, well, generally as a coat stand. Uh, so yeah, you don't need spinning platters at all. Uh, but that said, it's quite interesting that Rain appears to be launching a controller without spinning platters because Rain is the scratch company. Um, and I think, if you just want some speculation here, I think what's happened there is that in the past, Denon DJ would have launched a all singing, all dancing Serato controller with all the clever tech on it, because Den and DJ is the pro DJ's brand in the, the umbrella of companies that comprises Newmark, Den and DJ, Rain, and all the others, M Audio, Akai, they're all under one 
umbrella called In Music. And so you've got three big DJ companies there, Newmark, Denon and Rain. But I think the thing is, Denon DJ is so focused now on standalone gear that doesn't need a laptop basically stuff that's got engine DJ plugged into it, but I don't think they would have wanted to launch a product like that under the Denon brand because it would dilute that brand. So I think they looked at all their brands and said, you know, the least bad fit for a really cool Serato performance controller is probably going to be rain. So anyway, we're just talking about that new controller. That's, that's my speculation there. Of course, we could be totally wrong with all this stuff, but we like to speculate. Uh, right, questions. This is from Alana, who says, um, I heard all about the new Serato stems. I'm just trying to learn more. Well, we've got a big article on Digital DJ Tips going through it. So do go take a look at that. Um, this is uh, a big hello to Sarah. Uh, Sarah Halstead, not seen you for a while here, Sarah. Or maybe I've just missed you. I do scroll pretty quickly through these, but good to see you, my friend. Um, are, this is another um, motorized platter question. Are motorized platters the future of DJ? Well, Christian, I think I probably answered that question. I'd say no. Uh, Jelly says, oh, sorry, Jell says, is there a release date known for this new rain controller? No. But let me give you some speculation again, because I've worked in this industry for a long time. Generally, when people start talking about something and releasing pictures, you're looking at weeks rather than months away, because you can't keep the interest going for too long before you have to drop some product, right? Put your money where your mouth is, or put your products where your, uh, put your, products where your photos are kind of thing. So I don't think it'll be too long, but we will let you know when we hear about that. Uh, Charlie says, I will definitely go with that new rain controller just for the performance functionality. They are hyping it up for a reason. We talked about this in our initial uh, tease because here in, when they released that initial picture of this new controller, which had very little on it to go on really, uh, I remember telling you guys that, uh, you know, they told us nothing, all we had was the picture. And the very, very first thing I did was get in contact with the people very high up in that company and say, what's all this about? Tell me more. And they kind of like smiled and said, Phil, we can't tell you anything, but we're really excited about this. And just those words, we're really excited. And we're saying things like we've been working on this for, you know, years and all that kind of stuff. And I know these people and I've seen them launch other products and not talk like that. So I think you're right. I think we are looking at a big product here. Um, so um, this is a good question. What's the situation with acapella websites? What's the best place to get acapellas right now? So interestingly, acapella websites have always been a gray area because ultimately it's copyrighted material that they are finding from obviously sometimes slightly less than above board sources and then giving you to download for free or for you know very little or whatever and it's been tolerated in DJing for years if not decades but it's not strictly something the record labels endorse or care for and acapella websites seem to have a wobble a few months ago so you might remember that Vocalerit and acapellasforyou.co.uk went down. And I spoke to the people behind one of those websites and found out the reason that they'd gone down was that the hosting company or one of the in internet companies they relied on to get the website online had actually been asked to take them down, which does sound like the record label was getting serious, doesn't it? But then Acapellas For You has just come back. So it's an interesting one. Ultimately, it's always going to be a game of cat and mouse if you're chasing unauthorized studio acapellas around the internet. But, you know, there is a way out now. We've been talking about Serato stems today, uh, and I've got Serato on my screen right now. This is the latest uh, beta or beta version of Serato. And built right into it here, we've got our stems. You can see in the top corner here, uh, the vocals, melodies, bass, and drums, and the effects that you can use to echo these out are now built in. And this will give you really, really nice acapellas. They're not perfect, but let me tell you something. They are probably the best we've heard so far, and they're definitely good enough for DJing with. So best place to get acapellas nowadays? Well, those sites are coming and going, they're still around. You can get some on the download stores, but try making your own. Some of the software is very, very good. Um, and this is real-time software we're looking at here. You can get software that isn't designed to do it in real time. For instance, Isotope can do it um, with some of their software, which is, even better, it can get really, really, really good results. So actually the interesting thing is Traktor has announced that they will be incorporating stems into Traktor DJ Pro and 
Native Instruments, the parent company, now is also under the same umbrella of companies with Isotope. So they're all one company now. So we would expect to see Tractor's implementation plugging in their technology, which is very, very good. So interesting times. Uh, but yeah, try making your own. Good, good starting place nowadays. Um, this is from Reza, who says, what's the best scratching course through Digital DJ Tips? Easy, let me just show you that. So go to Digital DJ Tips website, click DJ courses at the top, and then in the top row, you will see scratching for controller DJs. This course has helped literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people to learn to scratch over the years. It is the best by far on the internet. It's the most thorough and it is the easiest way to learn. It's taught by Steve Canueto, who is our tutor, and he has alongside him some of the best in the business, including DJ Rasp, DJ Angelo, and others. So this takes you from beginning, literally from your first little baby scratch, to being able to compete in scratch competitions. And it has everything you need in it. It's got scratch sounds, it's got videos, it's got downloadable cheat sheets, and it's got tutor help all the way through. And the best bit, it's taught on digital DJ gear, modern controllers. Yes, there's record decks in there. Yes, there's stuff in there that means you could learn this on anything, but we don't look down on you because you want to do it on your DJ controller. So do go take a look at Scratching for Controller DJs, taught by uh, Steve, Angelo, Rasp, Carlo, and others. So uh, there's lots of uh, testimonials on that page as well, where you can see how our other students have got on with that course. Uh, right, let's grab another question. Thank you for that one, Reza. Um, this is from, hello to Rob, by the way, who says, I hope you're keeping well. I hope you're keeping well as well, Rob. Uh, Majoro Holdings says, I need help curating my hotel restaurant sets. So it's a good question. Let's talk about music for a bit. Let's talk about how to uh, approach playing sets in hotels and restaurants. In other, wo in other words, in places where everyone hasn't come to dance to your music, right? Because a club will open at a set time, people will arrive, at some point it's full enough to hit that tipping point where the dance floor fills up. It has a beginning, middle and an end and people are there to dance and, and typically they will be interacting with the DJ, knowing who the DJ is, they've turned up for a certain type of music. It's often not the case in bars, usually not the case in bars. A bar is more like a destination venue where people go to meet and mingle and be seen. It could be a beach bar, which means people are there for a cocktail and to lie on the beach. It could be a restaurant as well, which means they're there for food. It could be a bar where people go as part of a bigger night out. But the point with bars is they tend to be open for longer than clubs and people tend to come and go at different times throughout the night. So the first piece of advice I'll give you, apart from the stuff which hopefully in your heart you know even if your ego sometimes makes you try and suppress this knowledge, is you're gonna keep the volume down so people can hear each other talk, and you're not gonna play all the massive, huge dance hits that are meant to make people dance when there's nowhere for them to dance. Most bars won't like you playing really loud and banging out, you know, um, floor filling music at 7.30 at night when they've got 40 people in. Um, bars tend to be more laid back, the bar music tends to be lower energy and you need to be very careful with the volume. I played a lot in a bar um, for a number of years. Uh, the most recent one I played in was a beach bar and, and they said to me a piece of advice which I think is a really good advice to give bar DJs about volume. Play louder than our background music so people know you're DJing but don't play so loud that people think they're in a club, and I think that's probably a good bit of advice. But apart from that advice, which as I say, your ego, um, ego notwithstanding, you should know that stuff. The biggest piece of advice I can give you is don't worry about mixing, just think about the music that you wanna play. Broaden the music you wanna play because you don't have to keep people on a dance floor, so you can play all kinds of music. Uh, as long as it's got, to me, as long as it's got a groove to it, that's gonna be good enough. And rotate the music in a different way than a mobile DJ would. A mobile DJ would play 15 minutes of rock, 15 minutes of hip hop, 15 minutes of oldies, 15 minutes of dance, 15 minutes of pop, you know, and, and, and generally move people around the venue and the, and, the, and the dance floor accordingly. But as a bar, restaurant, you know, lounge, pub type DJ, you are more open to playing everything that you think is a good match for that venue. So for instance, the beach bar I used to play at, I would play very deep house, um, very slow, um, music of all types, so like R&B, uh, funk, reggae, soul, um, what, what you call trip hop, ambient, chill out, balearic, all those kind of down tempo beats would be what I'd play. But the point is people are gonna turn up, 
have a drink, or hopefully if you're doing your job, two drinks, or even three, and then go. And then other people are going to turn up and go, and other people are going to turn up and go. So it's like watching the concourse of a railway station. You know, any time you look, there's the same number of people there, or, or, you know, it gets busier throughout the day and then quieter and busier and quieter, but they're always different people. So there's absolutely no point doing either what a mobile DJ would do, which is play a chunk of this and a chunk of that and a chunk of that until you've gone through your whole set playing, you know, 15 different genres, or doing what a club DJ would play, playing a warm up, a peak, and a finishing. It's much better to play everything that you want to play. You know, a bit of that, bit of that, bit of that, bit of that, bit of that. And half an hour later or an hour later, when, when the people in front of you have kind of changed enough, do it all again. I don't mean play the same songs again, but go back to the beginning. We'll have a little bit of soul, a little bit of funk, a little bit of reggae, a little bit of Balearic, a little bit of deep house, a little bit of soft rock, yacht rock. That's what I used to play at the beach bar. You know, that was my set of music. But it is a nice way of playing because it, the variety keeps everyone happy. People who stay there for the whole night will still hear a massive variety of music and you can move around like that because you're not having to make people dance and you can keep yourself happier. So I used to love just, you know, playing those tracks that I wouldn't dare play in a club because I knew that they might not fill the dance floor or the tempo was wrong or, or frankly, I just hadn't listened to them for a while and I fancied it. You know, people aren't listening quite as hard in those venues. I really hope you have fun. Majora Holdings doing that. Do come back sometime and tell us how you got on. Um, so Lou, hello Lou, says, is that a new, ta new tractor controller? Where? Am I showing something off I shouldn't? Or do you mean that one I was showing on the screen? The one I was showing on the screen was the new, um, we think now, the new Rain uh, fixed platter controller, this one here in the middle of my screen here. Let's just zoom in on that picture. They've just released that picture of it there. Uh, and we think it's definitely a fixed platter, um, possibly four channel Serato performance controller with all the bells and whistles on it. That's our current guess. Um, and quite exciting to see Rain's take on a fixed platter jog wheel. I think it'll be fantastic because rain quality is really, really nice. So yeah, we're looking forward to seeing that, but no, it's not a tractor controller. Uh, right. We're live, people. Uh, it is Digital DJ Tips. It's me, Phil, in the studio. Uh, and we're taking your questions on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. So let's go and see what else is being asked. Ian says, has the BPM show in Birmingham happened yet this year? Nothing to do with BPM Supreme, by the way, or BPM the festival. Um, anything to report? So no, it hasn't. It's actually happening next. In fact, it might be happening right now. I think it's happening right now, but we're not there. So I can't tell you. I very, very much doubt there'll be anything there that we don't know about because the gear companies don't launch gear at shows anymore. They just do it all online and with YouTubers and influencers and all that stuff. The world has changed. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Lei Wulong, this is another question about Tractor says, are native instruments done with making mixers, i.e. we've seen no update to the Z2 mixer? Thank you. Uh, native instruments have been teasing new hardware, but nothing moves quickly in native instruments land, in tractor land. So I think there is new hardware coming, but when and what that is, we've got no idea. I mean, it's still a lovely mixer. Don't know where ours has gone, actually. It should be here somewhere. There it is. Still a lovely mixer, the Tractor Control Z2. It's a great little device if you're a tractor user. Um, it works fine, it integrates well, it's, we love it. Um, so there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, mixers move very, very slowly. This is, there's not much that has to change, uh, or there's not much that has changed that means a mixer will suddenly be out of date. I mean, God, how long has this uh, been um, the club standard, right? The Pioneer, DJM 900 Nexus 2. This has been the club standard for, God, I don't want to guess, but it's got to be five or six years, right? And this wasn't that much of a change on the, on the DJM 900 Nexus that came before it. You know, these things do change very slowly, so I wouldn't worry. The Z2 is still a good mixer, and I bet you can get it for a good price nowadays as well. Um, but no, we have got no info on that uh, lay. So, Robert in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, Robert. I'm looking for a quality set of DJ headphones says Robert. Should I only consider closed back or are open back headphones worth considering? Thank you for your help. Let's talk about DJ headphones. Let's grab a pair of headphones. In fact, I've got one right in front of me. Of course I have. Uh, a pair of DJ headphones to work 
properly needs to have a few things. It needs to have a closed back. So that answers your question, Robert. And the reason for that is they need to block out the outside world. So when you put them on, you should sound muffled to yourself. Like I'm talking now and I sound really muffled. So if they don't do that, and I have some open back hi-fi headphones at home, which when I put them on, they don't quieten down the outside world at all. It's like I haven't got them on. And that's a good thing if you're gonna be wearing them for a long time and you're in a quiet room. So I typically sit there when my family's gone to bed and I put my, my lovely headphones on and I'll listen to music to relax. And I don't want DJ headphones clamping my ears and making everything sound muffled when I can wear open backed headphones that I could wear for hours if I wanted. But for DJ use, they've gotta be closed back. Also for DJ use, you want them to clamp to your head properly because that means they're pushing on your ears and they're helping that natural noise cancelling to happen. They need a wire because Bluetooth headphones are no good for DJing because you need no latency going on. Preferably a wire that only plugs into one of them and then is wired internally to the other one. It's just less to go wrong. Although the, the classic headphone that doesn't do that is the Sennheiser HD25, which is a lovely headphone. Uh, and that still has one going to, I think it still has one going to each. I've got some over there. Can't remember, you know, my brain's like a sieve nowadays. Anyway, they need to have a headband because headphones need to be able to stay there so both your hands are free and they need to be able to go off and on your ears one on one off because quite often you'll dj with a monitor speaker in one ear and the headphone on the other ear uh, and i think it's always good if they can fold up and fit in a bag because they that way are easier to carry around um, and they need to be durable then by the way the ones i'm holding up here we've kind of pimped them up a bit but these are pioneer dj uh, q1 headphones and you can buy pads in various colors for them and leaves in various colors, which is why we've got them to the Digital DJ Tips kind of brand. Um, and it's why we always use them on our, on our live streams and stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's what you need in DJ headphones. And of course they need to be nice and loud and all that stuff. Uh, but you're looking for closed back, headband, durable, decent grip on your head, uh, wired and preferably, and preferably detachable cable as well, because that means you can replace the cable. And one other thing which people don't really think about, but I think it's important, a coiled cable, because a coiled cable, when I'm stood here, that is not on the floor. That's not dragging along the floor. I'm not gonna trip over it. But I can walk way over there if I didn't have a wall there, um, because this cable is actually quite long when you stretch it. So this kind of cable is good because it means you can move around the DJ booth. You can, you know, someone gives you their coat, you can take it to the back and say, oh, your coat's looked after and all that stuff. Uh, but they won't dangle around your feet when you are stood near the, uh, near the decks. Right. Good fun to talk about headphones. Thank you for that, Robert. Uh, this is Digital DJ Tips. It's me, Phil, in the studio for another 25 minutes or so with your questions. So please keep asking them. We're live on YouTube, Facebook, preferred platform, and Twitch. Uh, and so Anthony says, Phil, do you know if the SC6000Ms will work with the new Serato update with the X1850 mixer. No idea, right, what you're asking is, um, we've got some down here actually, whether the um, whether the, the Denon DJ decks, which are standalone, but they also work with Serato, will work with the, uh, the new Serato stems. So the Serato stems feature that I showed you on the screen a minute ago is in beta or beta at the moment. And that means that they are still working on it but you can get it, it's public. What you have to do is go, well, I'll show you the best way of doing it. If you're not currently a Serato user, this is the best way of doing it. Head to Digital DJ Tips and click on the latest or click on news, news will do it. And then find the news article where we announce that Serato's have added stems to their software. Then scroll down and click on the download link, which will take you to the Serato website where they, they announce STEMs. And uh, big shout out to Jazzy Jeff, our tutor, right there at the top of the page. Uh, so you can then click on this Join the Public Beta now, and it will take you to a page where you sign up and then you can download it. You see, download the latest Serato version, and there it is, and you go grab it for yourself. But more importantly, uh, you're in this forum. I better turn that off because I'm not meant to show you that because you're only meant to be in that forum if you've done what I just suggested you do because I'm already in there. It dropped me straight into the forum. In that forum, there is discussion going on about all the hardware that works currently with Serato 3.0 beta. And one of the things in there is a list of 
of that hardware that works with it. And it's constantly being changed and updated and people are reporting back on issues and this works well and that doesn't work well. So if you wanna know when your hardware is gonna be supported, that's the place to go and ask. And it's also the place to check. It might already be in there. I know I'm gonna guess they're working from the most popular gear down the list, which, would, which is certainly how I would approach it. Um, but they're not ready yet. This software's not ready to go live yet. It's not ready to launch. And one of the reasons is they haven't got all the integrations in yet. But that's the place to go and look for that. Right, let's move on. Um, so this is uh, from uh, South who says, I want to get an all-in-one system. Is the XDJ RR good? Or should I save more for the RX2? I would say you should save more if you want to go down that route. And we've had it out today. I've been making some tuition on it. For the RX3, which is the current RX controller. It's a really nice unit. It's kind of got most things right. It's two-channel and it is... A nice big screen, which is the first standalone all-in-one from Pioneer with a 10-inch screen. I think it's 10 inches. It is, apart from the one thing that I really, really wish they'd included on there, which is key shifting, live key shifting, which they didn't include, and it's really annoying. Apart from that, it's got everything on it that um, a two-channel standalone would need. Uh, that said, the RXs are behind the Denon DJ Prime uh, or the engine DJ rather equipment, because even something like this, which is a lot cheaper, I mean, it's obviously a lot smaller and it's aimed at a different market, but even something like this, the Mixstream Pro from Newmark, has got, it's, it's standalone, you don't need a, uh, a laptop with this at all. Even this has got Wi-Fi, it's got, which means you can plug it into streaming services uh, like Tidal, Beatport, BeatSource and SoundCloud, and you can stream music with no wires, and DJ without owning any music. Uh, but more to the point, you can discover music that you don't know you like yet and then go and buy it. And so you know, you've got all that flexibility built in. It can control lighting, including your home lighting. So if you've got some smart lights at home, like the Philips ones or the Nano Leaf lights, it can just control them. Wi-Fi, it's just a, there's a panel there and you can make your lights do stuff to the music and stuff. They're really, really nice, the Denon and the Newmark. Uh, units that run Engine DJ, which is the software that they run. So the Pioneer stuff is industry standard. If you one day you want to DJ on stuff like this, uh, and my camera's gone off there, uh, but if one day you want to DJ on stuff like that, there we go, it's back on again, um, it probably might be worth buying the RX, so the XDJ RX3, uh, the current one, or even the RZ or RZ, because it's most like this. But if you just want the best standalone tech you can get nowadays, you're probably better off with the Denon or Newmark equipment. Uh, but anyway, there's, some, there's my views on the current standalone stuff. Thanks for the question, Alex. Of course, I can't answer it on a uh, family show, but uh, always nice to have the, uh, the edgy questions popping in. Uh, this is from Shindig who says lollipop headphones are making a comeback. If so, why? Well, it's the first I've heard. Lollipop headphones were based on um, using the old kind of telephone handsets as a, uh, as a monitor for your DJ, uh, for cueing your music. Back in the day when we used to build our own DJ gear, and yes, I'm old enough to remember that, one of the things that people used to do was have their, you know, two turntables in a box with carpet on it. And in order to monitor what, what they wanted to hear, instead of having headphones, they'd wire in an old telephone receiver and literally hold it to their ears. And then that kind of developed into what was called a lollipop headphone, which was, as it sounds, it looked like a lollipop, it had a stick, and on the end it had one headphone, like one of these. And the idea was you held it to your ear like this when you're monitoring and stuff. I don't know that they are making a comeback. Uh, you know, monocles, Monocles still exist, but most people wear spectacles. Uh, so uh, oh, I, I, don't think you'll, I don't think you'll see them making a comeback. They involve one of your hands and DJ now is all about what you do on the decks, isn't it? It's about having both your hands to do all the clever stuff. And if you've got one hand holding a lollipop headphone to your ear, well then you ain't gonna be able to do that stuff. Um, right, so uh, thank you everyone who's helping other people in the comments. Um, I invariably say this as we get into the second half of our live shows, but it's so lovely to see our community helping each other out. And I can see you chatting to each other. I can see all the at signs as you answer each other's questions. So thank you for that. Um, so the, uh, the next live one, let's find something that's a little bit different. 
Um, this is from James. This is James talking about DJing techniques. It was like a DJing techniques question. Uh, James says, hi, Phil, DJ J Esquire from Columbia here. What is the most used effect for mixing out? Most used effect for mixing out. And what is the most effective effect to use based on music genre? Um, right, the most used effect for mixing out, it, it, it does depend on the genre. So funnily enough, I've literally been today recording some lessons on uh, mixing out. And the two big ones are echo and reverb. Echo is where you trigger an echo effectively half a beat or a beat before the end of a song or where you want to stop a song. And then you set the echo to one beat in length or half a beat in length, and then you Trigger the echo, stop the song, and the echo echoes out like that. And that gives you a few seconds and a continuing beat, even though you stop the song, to throw the next track in over. Even easier than that is just using a really big reverb, uh, because a really big reverb will be like, if you don't know what reverb is, well, you do know what it is, but you maybe haven't put the, the, the effect with the name. Imagine you're playing in a really big club and you've got a decent little sound. Well, no, actually, sorry, I don't mean that. Imagine you're playing in a small, cozy club, low ceiling, lots of people, speakers right on the dance floor, everything's warm, everything feels like right in front of you, everything feels like, almost like you're DJing in your living room, but it's hotter and more crowded and more exciting, right? And you're mixing away. Imagine that you could instantly take everything about that club and put it in the biggest, aircraft hangar in the world. You could literally click your fingers and suddenly you were all in an aircraft hangar with the highest ceiling and the walls that are so far away you can hardly see them. Imagine how different that would sound. It would suddenly have this huge colour to it, this huge ambient feel that is very different to being in a cozy, low ceiling packed club, right? In other words, you'd get, it wouldn't be an echo, it wouldn't be coming back at you, but it would just be the, like talking in a church, like you walk into a church and say, hello, and it feels big, it feels like you're feeling your stomach, that's reverb. And you can dial in very, very, very big reverbs on the effects on all DJ gear. This is, we'll have one on here, there you go, reverb, right there in the middle. So the idea with this is you trigger the reverb, you stop the currently playing song, and the reverb, oh, it just has that echo that goes out. It's not an echo, because it's not coming back at you like that. It's just a feeling, and it can last for several seconds. And the beauty about using that as a transition effect is, that it doesn't, it sounds very natural because we're all used to, one of the things our ears do, I think, as a survival thing is figure out where we are, whether we're somewhere where, you know, we could be back in the day, and I really mean back in the day here, we could have been in a valley where the mountains were echoing around us, or we could have been in a wood where there was no echo at all, or we could have been, you know, in any kind of place where reverb's one of the things humans tune into. So it sounds very natural. And it doesn't matter what song you were playing, it still sounds natural. So reverb is one of those things that's universal, you could use it with any genre. I'd say the echo out is probably best used by open format and house DJs who want something that's got a bit of a beat for them to kind of scratch and mix over the top of. Other effects, a lot of genres use filters. So a filter is where you turn the one knob that's at the top of the controller above these uh, top of these anyway, top of your, your uh, up faders. Uh, and the filter will take everything out so it goes very, very bassy or it'll make everything go so there's no bass at all in the signal. And then as you go back to the middle, it goes back to normal. So these are very useful because a lot of music uses these. A lot of stuff arrives in the mix and leaves the mix by being filtered in and out by the producer. So they give you something that feels very similar to that. But also, if you wanted to take a song out of the mix by getting rid of everything apart from the bass, it means you'd have to slowly take out these two controls here, the bass and the treble and the mid. Uh, whereas with this, you can do it all in one control. So it gives your other hand free to do something else. So I'd say filters, echo and reverb are the three that you're looking at as the most used transition effects. Thank you for the question, Isabelta. Uh, so hello to Scraggles. Uh, who says, forget getting the original versions of the old school stuff, get the newer remixes. Well, that's a good idea, and they will be on the download pools. We were talking about download pools earlier on, won't, uh, weren't we? Um, so Lou says, of all the record pools, franchise record pool is not the greatest, but it does have some old school music. So thank you for that little tip there. Um, so uh, this is from Max. I love this question. I can give you the perfect, well, perfect, it's the correct answer. Max says, Am I allowed to convert CDs into MP3s and DJ with them? Because I was talking about doing this earlier, wasn't I? 
And the answer is yes, pretty much everywhere in the world. Because why not? Why wouldn't you be able to? You own the music. You just want to play it without taking the CD with you. Um, and so, yes, the way that licensing works is that the venue needs a public performance license, which covers the public performance of music in that venue. So a singer-songwriter could turn up and sing a Madonna song or a Billy Joel song, <laughs> whatever, a Harry Styles song, uh, on their guitar, and they're covered by the PPL license. But also, a DJ can turn up and play music. So the performance of music that belongs to other people, that, that, where, where the rights in that music belong to other people, is covered by a, a public performance license or similar. Um, and so that's it. That was always it. That's, that's it, job done. DJs are in the clear. Until a very small number of countries decided that they would introduce a new kind of license. And I think, and someone will correct me if I'm wrong, I think the three countries that do this are Finland, Canada, and the United Kingdom. I don't think there are any others. I might be wrong on one of those, but I certainly know the UK is one of them. I'm pretty sure about the other two. They've introduced a license that says if you transfer the format of your music from one format to another, then the DJ, i.e. you, are responsible for buying a license every year just to be able to play that music that you've bought out. So if I had a CD and I played that in my DJ set, I wouldn't need this license, but if I ripped that CD to my laptop and then played it for my laptop, I would need that license. I'm quite happy to put my flag in the sand and say that is basically legalized extortion and it's wrong. And I've never heard of anyone being prosecuted for not having that license. And frankly, I don't think I know anyone who's got that license. What I have seen is, uh, like I don't personally know anyone who's got that license. What I have seen is mobile wedding event DJs, you know, buying that license and saying, if you're booking an event DJ or wedding DJ, do check that they've got this license because otherwise they're DJing illegally uh, and using it as a kind of marketing tool, which I'm sure is not what was intended when this license was launched and another reason to scrap it. So if you're in Finland, the UK or Canada, theoretically, you need this license. Just double check those territories. You know, if you're in one of those places, check. Um, and in practice, I'm no lawyer. Uh, don't come to me if you do get prosecuted. In practice, I've never seen anyone getting into any trouble for not having it. The general rule is the venue covers the licensing. Right, this is brilliant. Loads and loads of questions coming in. Uh, Luis in San Francisco, what's the best record pool for Latin remixes? I've got no idea, but I can tell you, Luis, that um, BPM Supreme is pushing its Latin pool a lot at the moment. So um, we covered it just the other day. They've just folded BPM uh, Supreme Latino into the full site and it's all looking fresh and new. So that could be a good place to start. There's an article over there on Digital DJ Tips where you can find a link, I'm sure, through to BPM Supreme and BPM Supreme Latino. There you can with their nice new look website. So go take a look at them as a starting point. And if anyone else has got any Latin uh, download pools that you want to share with us, please do so. Uh, and I will read them out if I get a chance before the end. So this is from DJ Asb, uh, and this is a great one. Uh, how can you use the pads of an XDJ RX3, which I just held up a minute ago, uh, for sampling? So a couple of things here. The standalone units from everyone, from Pioneer DJ, even, even this, they don't have samplers on. Even the best pro gear, no sampler built into this. They just don't have it. So if you want to use a sampler with that kind of gear, you've got to use software. And it, I'm figuring out that you've worked this out, uh, DJ as, uh, because you want to use it with Rekordbox. Because a lot of these units, including the Pioneer stuff there, and a lot of the standalones will work with software as well. Like the Pioneer ones will work with Rekordbox. Some of the Denim ones work with Serato, etc. And then, usually, there's a mapping on the pads, which will allow you to access the sampler. Uh, but if there isn't, you can go in and MIDI map those things either to the pads that exist sometimes or to an external device. So for instance, for Rekordbox, there is this, the Pioneer DJ DDJ XP2. This is designed for Rekordbox and for Serato actually. And this plugs in, so you don't plug this into your 
XDJ, you plug this into your laptop as well as your XDJ, and then you get control. Record Box has actually got 16 pads per track if you want them. Uh, you get control over all of Record Box's effects, uh, or pad functions in a standalone unit. So that's another way of doing it. And by the way, if you're a user of a standalone DJ system, so it could be the Engine DJ stuff from Denon DJ or Numa, or it could be the Pioneer DJ XDJ stuff, or indeed this kind of Pioneer DJ uh, setup here. If you're a user of any of this stuff and you really want a sampler in order to get your workflow going with dropping in samples and sampling your set live and resampling it and all that stuff, we recommend this one. This is the Roland SP404 Mark II. This is really nice because you can plug it into your spare channel on the back of your DJ gear, but you can also plug a spare output from your DJ gear back into this. You can resample into this at the same time. It's got pads, it's got a screen, just a very DJ feeling device. It's even got a DJ mode. You could even, we always say to you, have a backup just in case your main gear goes down. You could even on something like this, have records loaded on some of the slots and it's got a little crossfader where you can literally mix records on this. So you can use this as a standalone uh, unit as well, but we really like that. There's other, there's other really good samplers out there. Um, one of the ones that we like, I, here it is, is this little one here. This is actually probably better for eye dents. You know, you wanna drop your DJ eye dents and drops and stuff in. Uh, but this is a great little thing. It's from Black Box, from 1010 Music. It's called the Black Box. Uh, as you can see, this is really portable. Sounds great. Again, it's got a screen. Um, so there are other samplers out there, but for DJs, when you look at it all, I think the best one is uh, the SP404, which is a great update of one of the most classic and well-loved samplers of all time. Uh, also called the SP404, that's the Mark II. Uh, right. So we've talked samplers, we've talked download pools, we've talked licensing. It's a classic digital DJ tips open question session. We're going everywhere, which is why we love to do this stuff. Let's grab another live question. Uh, this one is from Sarah, who's talking to Max. And Sarah's saying, look, about half of my music is ripped from CD. It's a great way of getting music cheaply, either because you already have the CD, good point, or you can find it super cheap on eBay. Just be careful with that licensing in the case that you live in one of those countries where they have that license. Uh, my team are just informing me of something very, very exciting, which uh, I'm going to tell you uh, because you might want to take us up on this. So Digital DJ Tips, let me just talk you quickly through the way it works. So Digital DJ Tips is the biggest tech website for DJs in the world. But we're also the biggest DJ school with, as I say, 35,000 students. All our courses are taught online. And the way it works is like this, and there's a reason for me telling you this now. We have what are called complete courses, which are the four courses you can see here on our courses page, which teach DJing, scratching, production, and mobile DJ business, right? So four very different types of complete courses. These will change your life. These will turn you into a pro mobile DJ or a pro scratch DJ or a producer who's got stuff on Beatport to sell or a DJ who's making a living from this. So these are the kind of courses that will change your life. And we've only got four of those covering the four big areas. Then we have the mixing courses, which are designed to get you doing tricks that you couldn't do before. And this is where you see names like Jazzy Jeff, DJ Angelo, James Hype, Layback Luke, and of course your digital DJ tips team, and not forgetting Rasp. Uh, so these are teaching different genres, different styles, different ways of moving beyond the boring blends that you can easily fall into on your DJ gear and using your pads and using your sampler and using your key functions and your effects and all your extra decks and all that stuff. So that's what the mixing courses are all about. So then we move down to the production courses. These are designed for people who wanna make music. Again, you see names popping up here like James and Layback Luke. And then we get to the more technical courses where we teach you how to use something. So, you know, if you're using a controller, this is a Serato controller, but there's also record box and tractor controllers out there to cover the main ones. If you're using any of those, it really pays to know your software inside out. And so we've got courses for that. And also for the very, very, very most popular DJ controllers, basically the Pioneer DJ, DDJ 1000s for Rekordbox and Serato. But, and this is why we came onto this, if you have done 
a couple of our courses. Maybe you've taken one of our specialized courses. So you can see those here as well, where we teach you mix, mixing and key mixing and live, sorry, um, making your own mixtapes, live streaming, um, how to use acapellas and how to use key and sample sets. And these are all very specialized courses that just teach you a skill uh, that you can add to what you've already got. Once you've taken a few of these courses and you're pretty much where you want to be, but you know you've got to keep learning, well, that's when you need to know about Digital DJ Lab because Digital DJ Lab is the next level of Digital DJ Tips. Digital DJ Lab will keep you on top of the game. This is our only subscription product. All of our courses you buy and you own for life. But Digital DJ Lab is different because Digital DJ Lab keeps you up to date and Digital DJ Lab is never finished. We are constantly adding new stuff to Digital DJ Lab, whether it's new mixed deconstructions of the latest DJ blends that are blowing up on TikTok, whether it is new skills. For instance, this is going to be the first place you see lessons in stems in Serato because it's a new thing. Whatever it is that's happening in DJing right now that needs teaching, it happens in Digital DJ Lab. This is where you're gonna get seminars and webinars like the one that you're on now with me, but there'll be you, me, and half a dozen other students, and we'll really dive deep into stuff. Proper coaching, we can't do it in any other way, it's not in any of our courses, and we of course can't do it on these shows because we've got thousands of people watch them. So this is a really, uh, a really beneficial product for when you are either already an accomplished DJ, or you've taken a few of our courses and you're ready to have something to be by your side from now on, both to get that close contact with Steve and myself and the other tutors, but also to get these extra skills. I mean, look at what you could learn here. Just look at all this lot. This goes way beyond the stuff that is in any of our courses. So Digital DJ Lab is a subscription, and at the moment, it's a dollar. You can get a whole month of Digital DJ Lab for a dollar. And that means that this is one of those rare chances when you can see what it's all about and decide if it's for you. Because we only do this a couple of times a year. Only, we only open this up for a week, even if, if, if a week, might even be five days, just a couple of times a year so that you can come and have a go and come and see if it's for you. And you only spend a dollar for a month of it. So come and do it. Go to Digital DJ Tips, click Courses at the top, and scroll down to the bottom of the page. Let me show you how to do that. Go to the Digital DJ Tips website. I do want to go, thank you. Uh, at the very top of the Digital DJ Tips website, you'll see a link that says DJ Courses. You'll start here, you'll click on DJ Courses, and you'll scroll right to the bottom. And down there, you will see Digital DJ Lab. Um, there it is. Click on there, and it's just a dollar today. Click on the button, and you will get that confirmed on the buy page that you're gonna be paying a single dollar, which is great. This does not happen often. So take us up on it, come and join, come and see what it's all about. Thank you team for reminding me of that. Uh, let's now go and grab uh, a few, in fact, we're gonna to have to grab our final question because unbelievably we've hit the top of the hour. How did that happen? Uh, so I'm gonna grab one more question. If you've asked your questions on Facebook, we'll get to you because that's what we do. We get to you in the week and we help you. If you are watching the recording on YouTube or Facebook, ask the question anywhere underneath and we'll get to you. Uh, so my final question is from, uh, so many of you just chatting, which is lovely. Um, it is, it's lovely. You're just all helping each other. And I think this is absolutely great. Uh, but it does mean that there's fewer questions for me to pull. Right, here's our final question. This is from Fred. Fred says, this is from somebody who mostly streams my music. I'm building a collection by converting all my saved streaming music. Should I be organizing them within Rekordbox or into folders externally? Right, so uh, a couple of things here I'm gonna cover off. If you convert, uh, and we'll use that word in inverted commas, music from a streaming service, uh, that is technically stealing that music. And you could get in trouble for that. Be careful DJing with music that you haven't got proof that you bought it. That said, the question is a valid one because the question is, when I'm getting music, when I'm getting music that I own, I have a music file, it's on my computer, and I'm, it's not from a streaming service, and I'm not, I'm not streaming it into my software. I actually have the file, so I've got a, a copy of it. How do I organize that music? Uh, and the question, is do I do it in folders or do I use my DJ software? Do not bother with folders. Stick it all in one big folder called DJ Music. 
and do all the organizing in your software. Nowadays, as long as you're only sticking to one platform, say you're a Rekordbox DJ or whatever, the library software is just about good enough in all DJ platforms for you not to worry with doing it any other way. And so my advice is to stick it all in one folder and then get into your DJ software. So um, in the DJ software I've got here, actually I think we've only got streaming music at the moment, streaming music at the moment in our software here. But in your DJ software, you get all kinds of ways of organizing your music. You can have smart playlists on the left-hand side. You can have all kinds of columns that you can fill in. So you can see on this uh, software, all the columns we've got here that we can fill in for our music. And so you don't really need any other way of organizing it because here you can have the year, here you can have the genre, here you can have smart playlists that update with stuff when you add it to the collection. And so any way you want to filter, any way you want to sort, any way you want to slice and dice that music can be done in real time or very, very quickly with a few clicks within your DJ software, which means it's absolutely pointless having files and folders. And the best bit about organizing it in your DJ software is that you can have the same track in loads of places. So it's not like with records. So back in the day, let's say I put this record here into my rave crate, but I also wanted to put it into my old school classics crate. Well, I can't because I've only got one copy of it. Doesn't matter, on DJ software, you can drag the same track and have it in all different playlists. And that means that it's almost insanely powerful the way you can organize your music. And by the way, another good thing about organizing your music in playlists like this is that you can, once you've got them in a playlist, you can move them around. So you can say, okay, I'm gonna do a playlist for tonight's DJ set. And you can put your tracks roughly in the order you might wanna play them within the playlist, which is a bit like organizing them in a record box from front to back. But again, it's non-destructive. You put it there, it hasn't gone away from there, and you could do it in another set. So now, let's say you DJ at the same venue every week, you could do a set, and then at the end of that night, you could put that set into an archive folder in your, in your DJ software, uh, which says old sets. And you do a new one next week, but you don't start from scratch. You look back on last week's and you say, what worked and what didn't work? Oh, I dragged the stuff over that did work and I'll add a few of the new tunes I've bought. So it makes your workflow a lot quicker. So my advice, unless you've got a good reason not to, stick it all in one, file, in one folder on your laptop, back that folder up, and then do all your organizing in your DJ software. Right, people, we are done. I have to go. Um, I'm going to thank you all very, very much for being here today. It's always great fun to do these live shows. I hope you got some value from it. Uh, and so from, uh, from me and everyone here in the studio, have a lovely rest of your week. Have a great weekend if you're DJing. And as always, get good, get out there, make the moments, and don't forget Digital DJ Lab, the number one subscription program for DJs in the world, is currently a $1 trial. Check it out on the Digital DJ Tips website. And I'll see you next week, sometime live from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Can't wait. By the way, why did we go back to that? No idea. No idea how long we've been on that. Hey, we were doing so well as well. Right, I'm out of here. Latest folks, have a good one. Bye-bye for now.